So today's um, thematic topic focuses on peatlands. Why do we care? Such a great question. Uh, we were just upstairs talking about why peat is sexy. <laughs> <laughs> And in fact, it really is sexy. Peat lens are incredibly important. I'm sure you've spoken with many scientists who have talked about the importance to climate regulation, mm -hmm. talked about the importance to biodiversity. But here in Indonesia, they're also incredibly important to livelihoods, to jobs. It's a major source of, uh, uh, it's where most of the oil palm is grown and a lot of the forestry takes place. So these are very important landscapes from productivity and economic perspective. Mm -hmm. They're also the source of most of the haze that blankets the Southeast Asia every several years when forest and land fires in Indonesia takes place. So management of peatlands is incredibly important for a variety of reasons in Indonesia. Absolutely. And when it comes to management, mm. a lot of times people think, wow, what a big investment. Mm. It's going to cost a lot mm. of money. Um, but actually, your organization, the World mm. Bank, you published a really interesting report mm. on how much money the Indonesian government mm. actually lost due to the crisis that in 2015 on fire. Right, no, in, in fact, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's mind-boggling. Uh, in 2015, just between August and October, uh, when Indonesia's El Nino-driven forest and land fires were at their worst, uh, Indonesia's emissions on a daily basis from fire were more than the emissions from the entire EU economy. So hugely important from a global climate dimension, but also, very important to Indonesia and Indonesia's economy. Uh, we estimated that the losses to, due to health impacts, education, kids who were stuck in their homes and weren't able to go out to school, uh, businesses that couldn't, couldn't, couldn't function because their trucks or their airplanes couldn't take off because of the haze, uh, actual losses because land burned up, uh, that in fact that cost the Indonesian economy about $16.1 billion. That's 2% of GDP in one of the G20 nations, huge amounts of money. It's actually about twice the cost of the reconstruction from the Aceh tsunami, mm -hmm. to give you a sense of scale. And that's due to an issue that is 100% man-made. Do you feel that that World Bank report mm -hmm. uh, was important and impactful in serving as a wake-up call to other countries around the world about how serious it is to invest in prevention measures? Mm -hmm. Those numbers actually changed the way that the Indonesians looked at the issue of fire and haze going into the December 2015 COP in Paris. President Jokowi went there recognizing that taking action on fire and haze and land management in Indonesia mattered, not just for Indonesia, but for the rest of the world. And he came in and made some very important commitments to address the major drivers of land degradation and peat, peat degradation in Indonesia. That included looking at uh, land tenure and land mapping and administration. It included looking at uh, fire management and prevention. And it also included investing quite significantly in, in moving towards restoring over two million hectares of peatland uh, and taking bold action to try to prevent future conversion of peatland, including through te putting a temporary moratorium on oil palm licenses. So really quite impressive. Uh, action on the part of the government of Indonesia. Absolutely. Mm. So speaking of that, you know, we really saw a shift in um, in policy and mm. also attitude. Mm. What do you think today is kind of stopping financial investment in meeting restoration targets? What are the best ways to kind of scale this up and, and get countries to invest in this? All right. So that's uh, a little bit of the million dollar question. I think one of the things we just heard upstairs in the panel on financing peat restoration in Indonesia is that there's actually a lot of money on the table. Mm -hmm. The government is spending billions of dollars in large scale land management in Indonesia. The question is, how can you redirect that to be more efficient and have better outcomes for the environment, for people, for the economy? Uh, and so that's really the challenge. And what we heard upstairs was that there's a really a need for coming together and putting clear rules of the game in place so that companies can invest uh, um, safely uh, with minimal risk uh, and making sure that there's also strong accountability measures and transparency measures. So making sure that everybody is accountable for what they do uh, will go a long way in terms of raising financing from the private sector also from government who needs to be the major funder of these activities um, and donors who will come in for a slice of that. The philosophy behind the Global Landscapes Forum, as you mentioned, is to get 
these different stakeholders sit together at the same table rather than work in silos. Um, how have you observed uh, the event today? Did you see that coming together? Were you able to kind of reach across the table yourself and meet people from um, different worlds who are working on similar issues? It was really very exciting to see that today. Uh, this is a new area. Um, clearly, we're going to need all sides to come together. Um, from civil society, from academia, from private sector, from government, from donors. Uh, and I think seeing that is really quite exciting. We need these opportunities to come together, to learn from each other, to find new ways to work. Um, and so that was very exciting for me to see. Uh, I also think it's, from the World Bank perspective, when we look to what does it take to get to real sustainable landscapes management, we see the need to also bring these actors together, uh, working across the various sectors that have uh, implications for land use, so agriculture, environment, um, water and land management, um, private sector, all these different parts need to come together to showcase how the different sectors, the trade-offs between the different sectors can, can really be matched to, to move towards a new vision of land management. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time Thank today. Thank you very much. Yeah.